everybody, welcome back to The Driveway Engineer, and today I'm going to talk about my Cut 50P Plasma Cutter. Um, I'm going to insert some footage. I, I tried to, uh, I was really excited to get it, and I tried to run through it really quick, but it, it needed some modifications out of the box. So let me just start this off by saying right now that if you think you're going to take this out of the box and use it as is, you probably are not. Um... Mine is the two cents model, which is, you know, they all come from the same place, but this one was kind of, kind of screwy. And, uh, I got it off eBay. I'll have a link to it in the description. It was right around $260. It didn't, it came with a barbed fitting, um, right here. It came with this barb. It came with two barb fittings and the quick connect for the hose, the internal hose. So, like, obviously, I can't hook it up to you know 120 pound shop air with a barb fitting. Um, I had to go through and pipe tape all the connections. Uh, it leaked like crazy. You have to assemble the regulator yourself. Uh, the other thing is that the the plug, the wire it comes with, the outlet cord, whatever you want to call it. This is rated for a 50 amp plug, which is what I have on it, but that diameter is way too small for it to be clamped in there. And also the internal diameter of the wire is too small for it to clamp into the uh, actual prongs where the screw runs down. So I had to take another piece of wire. I, uh, I took this piece of wire here that's a lot thicker gauge and uh, I just cut them off and sandwiched it so that there were two like this and then it could clamp down on the uh prongs correctly i think at some point we're in the middle of a polar vortex here in michigan right now so it's like negative three it's really cold out um when it's warmer i will rewire that with a more appropriate heavy gauge wire um i think this stuff's eight gauge and i don't think i have it it's 10 I don't have any more of it, but uh, I'll get some more. It's also really short. Like the cord's only like two foot long, if that. So it's only two foot long and it's really short. And uh, so like I have an extension cord so I can wheel my welder and stuff out, but it's kind of a pain. Um, and it's really a pain. Like, see, I had to set this up here because otherwise it would just be pulling on the cord. It would be dangling in the air. Like this isn't even close enough to the ground from my bench. Um, so yeah, I'll probably just put a new longer cord that can at least reach the ground so that that doesn't have to dangle and, you know, and pull on the board. Uh, you see, I got, this is a tech screw and that it, it just came missing one screw from the handle. It was like flopped around out of the box. I opened it up. I looked inside. Nothing was obviously loose. There was no, uh, th there was nothing blatantly wrong with it. Um, the board does have a bow in it, just like other reviewers mentioned. Uh, I don't know what, if anything, I'm going to do about that. Probably nothing. It doesn't, I mean, I, I grabbed it and wiggled it, and it, it, there's no movement to it. So, um, the hookups here, this torch, the ground, it, it only gives you, like, quarter of a turn. Um, so, that was kind of goofy. It's very light. This thing probably only weighs like 15 pounds or so. So you could definitely carry it around all day if you had to. Uh, the ground clamp on it is excellent. Like this is a really nice ground clamp. It's too bad. Everything else is all screwy. Uh, the torch head. That was another gotcha moment. Pardon me. So the torch head here has this paddle switch on it, um, and it kind of sort of wraps around like it's supposed to kind of clamp. Boop. And I've seen on other videos, I noticed after the fact that they were zip tied on, and mine was not. Um, there's a little tiny micro switch inside here that this pushes on, and it's kind of chintzy and doesn't really feel that great. Um, but anyway, I was making a little trial cut, messing around, and, uh, 
the, the, the switch just completely fell off the torch. And I really didn't know why or what was going on, so it took me a minute to piece it all together. Um, so yeah, that happened. I'll probably change this tor torch head out to something else. Um, the heat sheathing is zip tied on it. And yours might be zip tied on like it's supposed to be, but mine was not. So, um, it's an AG60. AG60P torch, um, and you can find them on eBay that are all like so sealed up and have a, hopefully you can hear that clicking. Um, they have an internal switch with like a little rubber uh, cover on them. Also, there was a return spring that goes right here um, and sits in a pocket to, to force that up, but at some, whenever it fell off, the, the return spring just went MIA. Um, it seems to be returning the way it is okay, but uh, I don't know. I don't really like it. I don't want it to stick on. So the internal regulator. Um, some people have complained that it's in KPA, but mine is in PSI. So uh, give me a moment here. Cut the shop air on. So yeah, mine's in PSI. I don't know really how to set it. I do know that I had it up at 60 PSI and it was blowing the pilot arc out. Um, so I cut it down. Once I got past all the uh, shenanigans from the initial... Uh, problems that I had like I, I cut a couple things here and it worked really well the big reason that I bought this one versus a more a cheaper cut 50 um that right there that pilot arc is just it's everything um they say it makes your consumables last longer but really the reason that I want it is I'm cutting rusty nasty stuff and I'm going to show you without the ground hooked up it won't cut um, but the pilot arc will still work. So if you have like rusty, crappy, or painted surfaces, that pilot arc just blows that crap right off. And then, you know, your actual arc can strike down to the surface. Also, if you're doing it spanned metal with the pilot arc, like if I hit right here, this little gap, it would go out and I'd have to restrike it. Um, it blows like that to cool the tip off, by the way. So it continues to blow air through for a moment. But yeah, without a pilot arc, if this was expanded metal, like I'd have to restrike it every time and it would just be a horrible, horrible experience. But with the pilot arc, it just automatically jumps back down and you can keep on cutting. Uh, this isn't a hypertherm, okay? It's also not $1,900, so I'm not cutting up bridges all day, every day. Like, I can't afford $1,900 to come out here and cut a piece of metal to make a bumper every once in a while. It's just, I just can't afford it, you know. If you can't afford it, you can't afford it. So people, you know, want to get into all this, oh, you're a bad American. I'm sure the hypertherm's a lovely, lovely machine, but it's not for me. Like, this thing's going to get used twice a month, you know. I can't justify it. And if you can't either, then, you know, here you are. So, uh, let me set you down for a minute here, and I'm going to put my glasses on, and I'll show you how it cuts. I'm just using these Hobart, uh, they're really nice, they have the safety shields and stuff. They're like shade 5. Some people say that they use, uh, 
Oh, like a welding shield or whatever? But that seems needlessly complicated and complex to me. I don't really want to go that far. Um, I can still see with these on. This is eighth inch uh, hot rolled steel. Nothing too extreme. Nothing too easy. I got it. I'm gonna cut it down to like 25. You're gonna have to take my word for it. I'm not gonna reset that. Um, this is literally like the third thing I've ever cut. So bear with me here. So on 25, it kind of struggled a little bit because I went too fast, but I've actually already cut on this at uh, 50. And at 50, like he just hammers right through it. My switch is all wonky and also I'm holding my torch goofy. Um, it's really cold out here and the cord's stiff. So yeah, I moved way too fast on that one. I think my switch isn't working quite right. So yeah, on uh See, I set my torch down and it uh, triggered just like a grinder. That paddle switch is kind of a it's kind of a hazard. Well, that's the eighth inch. When the switch works right, it blows right through it, no problem. Um, you can make brackets or whatever all day long if you wanted to with that. I'm not going to cut anything much thicker than that, personally. So this is uh, 
quarter inch plate here and hopefully my torch lasts long enough for me quarter inch i don't have anything thicker than quarter inch around here because i'm not going to use anything thicker than quarter inch but uh clamp my glove to the table Hopefully this stupid switch works long enough for me to finish the video. So it's still set fully on 50 amps. Um, hopefully my... So this is welded on the back side at that joint and there we go um, you can see where it blew through the uh, weld and blew through the metal nice and clean I don't know how long that took 10 seconds or something uh, you know I just freehanded that out Focus, 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 focus. Um, anyway, I don't know. I went pretty fast. It seems like a pretty clean cut, clean enough for me and, and the girls I go with. Uh, I can definitely, you know, grind that off. I'd probably break that slag off. Some of it's weld. But, uh, yeah, I mean... For $260, like, I'm pretty happy with this. I'm going to be able to cut painted metal and stuff like that without having to grind it down. I'm not going to have to strike an arc all the time. Neat, neat, neat. Uh, this is going to make my bumper fabrication just go so much smoother. So, which I'm not going to get into uh, until it warms up to the 30s or so. Because, like I said, it's like negative 3 out here right now. But, uh, yeah. If you're looking for a plasma cutter and you're just a hobbyist and you just want to make yourself a few brackets or, or build a bumper or, you know, whatever, um, like, that was way easier than grinding it with a grinder and I didn't have to deal with a wheel blowing up in my face or anything else. Um, all in all, I'm pretty happy with it. I'll probably wind up putting another 40, 50 bucks into a decent uh, cord for it and uh, torch and I'll certainly keep you guys updated with how it goes. If it fails or explodes, I didn't have any smoke come out. There's people that said that they turned it on, plugged it in, and like literally smoke came out immediately. I've not had any of that, uh, you know, but I just used it more on this video than I have altogether. But I am going to be building a whole entire bumper, so I'll keep you guys updated. Thanks for watching. Thanks for liking and subscribing. Uh, I appreciate it. Helps out a lot. And we'll see you next time on the Driveway Engineer.